Hi there, thanks for watching. I'm going to go over some basic things that you'll want to know for editing the medical records in Crystal Practice Management. What we're looking at right now is our current template for Crystal. Uh, to get to this point, you're going to want to click on the records and you'll click on a test patient. It's always good to be in a test patient when you edit your medical record templates. So bring up your search window. You can type in test. If you don't have a test patient, go ahead and um, add one because you'll definitely want one. So with that, now we're in our test patient. Uh, what you can do uh, before you actually start editing is you can make a backup of your current template. That's going to be done under EHR and then Import Templates Medical Record Utility which brings us to this pop-up window. So you've got a big purple button called Backup Existing Templates. Um, you can click it and then you can save that file to your documents or your desktop or wherever you'd like to keep your backup files in the event that you needed to revert back to that file um, or if there's a couple of different scenarios, but that's the, that's the major one. Okay, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this window. And to get into edit mode, we're going to come up to EHR settings up top. And then towards the middle, we have edit medical record templates. All right, so now we're in edit mode. And the first thing that we see is the edit records window. This window is very important. It actually holds all of the information for every single field that we have on our medical records template. So this list can get quite big, um, but that's totally fine. There's not a limit of how many fields you can have. So uh, you can add as many fields as you need. Um, and then there's also some default fields. Uh, those are in the negative section. These directly correlate to the ARRA tab for meaningful use. So we'll go over that in, in another video. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and either minimize or close this window. And whatever method you minimize or close it, it's going to dock at the bottom. So you'll always be able to pull that up as needed. Okay. So there's that. All right. So now that we're in edit mode, we can see that it looks very similar, but it looks very busy. Uh, that's because there's two numbers for each field. The first number that you see, uh, if you look at the primary field, is number two. Uh, this number is going to be the tab order. So as you're entering your information, where is your cursor going to go next? So we can see that it goes in a nice sequence, two, three, four, all the way down. Uh, the fields the buttons and the checkboxes can all have field numbers or tab numbers so that way you can make it jump from a button to a field to a checkbox or just you know stick with the fields or however you really want to do it there is a separate video that goes over editing the tab order and just keep in mind that the tab order is usually the very last thing that I do when I'm doing a custom template so uh, save that for last. Okay, uh, the second number that you're going to see is the number in parentheses, and that is the field's specific uh, number, the field ID. Okay, so a label, um, a checkbox, a field, once again, they all have their own unique field number. And uh, you might see that in some places in the tabs, you have repeating numbers. So for instance, in the chief complaint tab, We've got the primary chief complaint is number 204, and then if we go to the A&P tab, we also have that number. If you see the number, the same number, throughout a tabs, it means that that field is actually linked throughout the separate tabs. So if you fill out this field on the chief complaint, it's going to automatically transfer the information into the A&P tab and vice versa. So that's um, pretty nice. That's one way to link fields. Okay, um, the other thing is that buttons, right off the bat, you don't actually see their tab order or their field ID, but it's very easy to reveal that. Uh, for that, you can come down to the bottom and you can click on reorder. And that's going to take a moment, depending on how many fields you have on your tab. But um, once it's done going into reorder, you'll see that everything turns white, and then this reveals the uh, the tab order, the field ID, and then if you see anything in brackets, that just basically indicates that there was a, a font or a color change. You don't ever really need to worry about this. Okay, so with that, um, you've got your button, so you could edit that if you needed to. If you'd like to go back to the to the um, mode where you can actually move things around or add new things, 
you can easily toggle back to move item. And then back to reorder if you need to get the, the numbers again. Okay, very good. So um, now that we've got that, um, let me show you um, something that's very basic. A lot of people like to know how they can change the label for a field. So for that, we're going to go ahead and click on the label, which is going to bring it to the front of the record. And we'll change the primary uh, chief complaints. So that's number 204. So we're going to bring up our edit records window from the bottom here. And we are going to click anywhere in this window right here. And then you can type in 204 on your keypad, which is going to jump to that field. Okay, so now that we're on 204 primary, if we wanted to change the label, we can just overwrite the text that's currently in here, and we can do CC, or whatever you want to change it to. Um, I'll actually change it back to primary. Uh, keep in mind, too, this is kind of good to know, is that if you do change uh, a button or a field, you're not going to see that change immediately. Now, that doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It just means that you'll actually have to save your changes and get out of edit mode before you can see that change. So um, it's something that takes a little bit to get used to, but that's one of the things that doesn't change immediately. Okay, so there's that. Uh, we can see that the type of this box is a two-line box. Uh, you can change it um, to a different size box if you needed to, or you could change it from a text box to a check box, or any one of these other options. Um, the most popular thing that you're going to see for sure is going to be the one-line uh, text box. The description, this you really only see when you're in edit mode, and um, generally the description doesn't really matter. You don't have to enter one. You can remove it altogether. There is a, a specific instance where the, the description can perform an action, but we'll go over that in a different video. Uh, and then you have your F9 keys, which is in another video as well. So um, just very basics here. Uh, so once you've modified a couple things and you want to do a quick save without getting out, there is a way to do that, and I recommend saving very, very often. Uh, the first reason is because there is no undo button. Uh, the second reason is in the event that anything happens and, you know, Crystal shuts down or anything like that, you've got your changes saved. You don't have to redo your work. So for that, you can come up to File Save, or you can press F2. Either way that you do it, you're going to get this little pop-up window that asks asks you if you want to save your data. So you can obviously click yes or no there. Um, once you're done with uh, editing or if you want to go into the regular mode and take a peek at your changes, the best way that I like to save my records is I like to click on records at the top here and I'll choose my test patient and then I get a prompt asking me if I want to save. So I'll just go ahead and save those changes. I really didn't do anything but we'll save them anyway. Okay, so now we're back in the regular mode and we can go ahead and take a look at our changes and do anything that we need to. Uh, one thing that I need to um, go over that always comes up is sometimes after you go into edit mode, you make your changes and you come back, you don't see your changes right away. Uh, that's due to a feature called versioning. And if you don't see your changes, um, you don't need to stress out. You probably didn't do anything wrong unless you clicked no when it asks you when it asks you if you wanted to save. Um, but uh, you can actually delete the medical record that you're currently in. And then when you start a new one, you'll see those changes. So let's go over that really quick. And this is also another reason why it's a good idea to be in the test station. So uh, under EHR settings and then record information, we have an option to delete the medical record. So when we click this, it'll ask us if we're sure. And yes, pretty positive I want to do that. Okay, so then if we go back into the records, back into our test patient, now we'll see a brand new record. And this will have all of our changes on it. So that's that's pretty much that. Um, if you have any questions, like I've said always, feel free to let us know. And if you have any other videos that you would like to see, please let me know. You can email Erica, E-R-I-C-A, at crystalpm.com. Thanks for watching.